Let's see. There we go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to a special episode of the Geek Out Show. Got an interview set up for you guys with the Kickstarter from Invincible Toys. We got Landon from Invincible Toys. And we got Seth from Invincible Toys. Yeah. Yeah. Here we man. go. Let me go ahead and uh, throw this up here. The Futuristic Hi. Combat Soldiers. So, uh, yeah, you guys are pretty pumped about that, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Man. I think you guys have already kind of started your rounds with the podcasting community, toy community. Uh, if anybody didn't catch it on Tuesday, no, no, sorry, not Tuesday, Thursday. Thursday, you guys did a toying around with Kevin. And I think yeah. the amazing and 796 Studios, so that was pretty dope. So yeah. if you guys have not watched that, please go check it out. It was a good watch. A lot of information there. But for anybody who didn't catch it, we're going to go over kind of some of the similar questions and, and hopefully get some of the same information here. So, uh, yeah, I want to actually get a little bit more into you, Landon, just to give some people, um, you know, a peace of mind. Because as, you know, we weren't recording, but we were talking about it a little bit. Um, people were freaking out a little bit like, who, who is this guy? Is he legit? Is the Kickstarter legit? Blah, 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 blah. Guys. I'm going to let you know, Landon's super legit, set the super legit, the Geek Out Show is super legit, you know, um, don't worry about anything from the past, they have nothing to do with any of those, I, I know we've had, you know, Kickstarters go bad before, but these guys are super legit, Landon is going to make it happen, and these are fucking amazing, I've been checking you out for the past, I don't know, like, four or five months now, or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we've, been, just... we've been talking for a while now. Probably yeah, you want to that. just go ahead and get into it a little bit with, uh, you know, what the Kickstarter is all about and, and, and uh, whatnot? Yeah, absolutely. Let's roll. All righty. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some of the stuff on screen. Like, as you see here, we got the whole entire logo. But uh, let's, let's maybe you can let us know what we're looking at right here. Yeah, so uh, the the first one was the futuristic combat soldiers logo. That's that's kind of you know the symbol that we've we've put with them, um, and that's the actual the symbol itself uh, has two triangles in it, and that is supposed to represent the the future and the past coming oh. together. Because if you look, yeah, if you look um, at our designs, we have things like Spartans and cowboys and samurais. So in, in the design, when I was creating that logo, I wanted something that would signify that. So the two triangles actually signifies the future and the past coming together in one. And then, of course, you have the, the lightning bolt just to give it that energized feel. And the stuff that you're going through now is uh, that's my artwork. That's artwork I actually did. Um, I was, I was going to make them into T-shirt and, and trading cards. Originally, I wanted to uh, possibly like, you know, do some trading cards. And if, if things went really well, maybe pack them in with the figures or something like that. So, yeah, that's that's what you're looking at right there. I got to say that was a pretty dope concept and I think it's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, it takes me back to like, you know, being a kid, getting the trading cards and stuff like that with the figures. It's something that we don't get anymore. Yeah. So we're actually in the process of working on cards. Seth is working on the cards um, and they're going to be like the Ooh. old throwback cards with the power charts on the back and like the little brief bios and, and things like that. So those are going to be really fun. That's awesome. That's dope. That's dope. I did not know that. Here goes uh, some early on. What is it like? Three D renders. Yeah, those are those were our first three D renders. Um, and basically, we had the three D the digital files already created at this point, and then they were turned over to somebody uh, to do what's called texturing, where they actually go through and add in all of the colors for the color schemes. And then uh, we had it done where it could do a full 360 degrees and all of that armor will actually go on and come off of it. So you have an opportunity to see what that figure looks like without the armor and, and fully armored up. Um, something you don't see here is because this was kind of early on in the process is all of the hands that the figure is going to come with. Each figure will come with probably seven to nine hands. Oh, wow. um, and yeah. And we'll, we'll probably increase some of their, their weapons range, but each one will come with a knife, a pistol, uh, and then weapons that are specific to, to the character themselves. And an interchangeable head. 
All the armor is modular, so you can actually remove any of the chest armor. You can remove the shoulder pads and stuff like that. Oh, that is awesome. Yep. And here goes the, the cowboys. Or cowboy, sorry. Yeah, the cowboy. <laughs> here we go. He's one of my favorites right here, I got to say. Yeah, um, I mean, probably in my top three, I'd probably say uh, Spartan is my favorite just because he was like the first concept, like where it all all kind of started. And then was uh, Cowboy and Samurai and Plains Warrior. Uh, they kind of like started everything. I think I, I pretty much kicked all of those concepts out uh, in a week. And one day I was just kind of sitting there and I was like, man, you know, I had, I'd worked on creating an action figure before and that kind of fell through because I didn't really uh, have the right connections in place. I just kind of started. I didn't know anything about creating action figures. And um, so I was I was kind of just putting my feelers out. And so that one didn't it didn't really go well, decided not to pursue that. And then that was probably a year before I started doing the Futuristic Combat Soldiers. And uh, one day I was sitting there, man, I was like, dude, I feel like this is a great idea. Let's kick out some concepts and let's start pursuing it. And uh, here we are, you know, two years later and we've got all of the prototypes done. You know, you see all of these cool renders. And but yeah, I mean, the probably those four are like are my favorites. The Plains Warrior, as we were just talking about right here. Yep. Got to say, man, these these are awesome, unique, different concepts. Yeah, and we get a lot. A lot of people are like, oh, hey, you know, like this is based off of Black Panther. Um, and the design really wasn't. It really wasn't based off of Black Panther. Uh, when I was looking for like a, a warrior, an African warrior, and kind of a concept for that, it was really hard to kind of like put something together that was was going to be like somebody that I felt was going to be agile um, and, and kind of it, it just steered itself towards that panther. And I felt like the design was going to really like lend itself to doing the, the helmet, the closed off helmet, where I could focus on the features of it being a cat while still making it feel like it's an enclosed helmet. Uh, and if you if, I don't know if you can zoom in on it, but it actually has like vents in the ears. Oh, so, I can see that. Yeah, if that helmet was running, you know, to, to go ahead and to keep them cool and stuff, you can, it would actually pump those vents out through those ears, so. And I think I'm seeing of... right here, the shoulder pads port into the shoulders, is that correct? Is that, yeah, is that so... uh, still what you guys are gonna go with or was this just for the 3D render? Oh, right now that's for the 3D render. The initial idea was that on the inside of the shoulder pads, it mm -hmm. was going to have like little pegs, really tiny pegs. And mm -hmm. then just like kind of the, the Marvel Legends Wolverine, the one that was in the, the yellow and blue, and they made a couple variants, but that was the primary one. It had the little ports on the inside and it would just kind of plug right into the shoulder. And that would be that would allow those shoulder pads to move up and down and be able to yeah. get that arm 360 or even go up you know, past the 90. And to me, articulation was like huge on these. I really wanted people to be able to get in there and articulate those figures in, in whatever way and be able to get them in some really cool dynamic poses because that's what I, that's kind of like that energy that I felt like these guys would have. They would be very dynamic. Uh, they would always be involved in, you know, these big battles and fights and, and doing things. And I wanted them to be able to be posed in these really cool, uh, you know, poses there on the shelf. So one of those things, like we wired up the caves and that shows energy. So when you look at that, oh, figure, you gotta, yeah, you got a cool pose on that cape, the capes flowing, you know, the swords back and they can get really far crouched down or hold their weapons, shoulder their weapons really well and get in those dynamic poses. To me, that's, that's really important as a collector. Definitely. Articulation is key. That's something that me and Seth always go back and forth about. Because uh, I love articulation. He's like, eh, it's okay. I'm just, I'm a vintage guy and uh, I don't take <laughs> shots. So, like, I do regular poses. But, I mean, obviously, who, I mean, who doesn't want articulation nowadays? Oh, it's yeah, offered. Definitely. This looks amazing, too, by the way. The Spartan. It might, mm -hmm. it might be my favorite one, I think, out of all of them. 
just the design, the helmet, everything. And yeah, just, I think that's the one that actually caught my eye out of all the uh, renders originally when I first stumbled across your page and, and started talking to you. Yeah, he seems to be the favorite. Um, so we've got him, you know, of course, on the Kickstarter. Uh, we, we've launched uh, some some ads and stuff like that. And you have the opportunity to get into Kickstarter and see like what people are selecting. You have an opportunity to run through your ads. And uh, the top three, usually it's uh, Spartan in first, uh, Cowboy in second, then Samurai in third. And then the rest of the figures kind of fluctuate underneath that. So yeah, he's, he's kind of a fan favorite so far. And then here we got the Ranger. Uh, you know, definitely like this one with the different rifles and, and uh, yeah. Gun, nice. Now he has hands. an exclusive for the Kickstarter, in a, like he an does. all black stealth suit with some with some hints of uh, neon green in the visor. I um, did get some pictures of him. I'll show them off in a minute. So here goes the articulation breakdown for anybody who wanted to check it out. And this looks killer. The articulation. I just got to say, if we just start off from the top, you know, we got the disc hinge in the neck uh, to the head, and then a doubled ball pig from the neck into the uh, top chest area, just can shoulders, just if, if it's okay, if I just uh, rattle some of this stuff off, you know, we got the T joint for the hips into the abdomen, yeah. diaphragm joint, double jointed elbows, knees, uh, thigh cut, double jointed uh, knees. I don't know if I said that yet. Do we have a boot cut? Yes, there's there's boot cut, there's thigh Sweet. swivel. Um, the only thing that wasn't integrated in it was a swivel at uh, the forearm. That's about the only thing on these uh, that, it, that it doesn't have. And then everything else is pretty much in there. You got the butterfly joints. You've got you know the um, the barbell at the uh, midsection. Mm -hmm. You've got the barbell bear at the waistline. The T joint. We're actually working on that. We're trying to go with drop down hips. Ooh, uh, sweet! That would be awesome. So yeah, you'll you'll have the dumbbell that that connects through the waist up into the abdomen, but we're trying to get the drop down legs done on that. So you'll actually be able to pull those down and move them forward. So you can, I mean, they can already hit a ninety degree kick. We've we've shown that here on Damn. the page. Yeah. Um, but it would be cool just to be able to really push those limits on those legs. Oh, definitely, definitely. And I got to say, like, even, like, the articulation at the uh, forearm area honestly isn't really that it, – it honestly isn't needed. Um, you have everything that is honestly needed, and you have more articulation than some companies offer. So kudos to you, man, for, for, for uh, implementing that much articulation. Do you know roughly about how many points? It uh -huh. seems like it's over 30. Yeah, it's, it's it's over 30 points of articulation in them. Uh, the, the whole goal, like rockers. I said, was, yeah, ankle rockers was a big thing. I wanted them to be able to do it. I know <laughs> there's probably not a lot of soldiers out there, you know, myself included. I, uh, I did a couple years of active duty, and I, I'm still in the reserves and stuff now. So I actually wear this stuff. Of, you know, obviously it's not futuristic combat soldier gear, <laughs> but I, I wear the plates, um, the, the vests tactical plate carriers and, and all the gear and stuff like that. Uh, you're not going to be doing splits in that, but no, I want to figure this. Yeah. I, I know I spent a lot of time in the action figure community, like watching the reviews, the action figure reviews and stuff like that. And for whatever reason, people want that people want their figures to be able to do splits. They want those ankles to be able to fit flat if they were in that pose. Um, if you spread those legs out or you, you bend those knees they want the feet to be able to fit flat. And that was something that was really important was to be able to, to allow them to kick 90 degrees, to be able to shoulder the rifles correctly, be able to actually sight down it. Um, because if we're going to call them futuristic combat soldiers, they have to be able to do the things that a soldier is going to be able to do and do it correctly. If not, you know, it, it just, I feel like that's just kind of sloppy in a figure. So we definitely try to put the, the care and attention into the articulation to make sure it could do all of the things that the people in the action figure community were asking for, even if it kind of maybe seemed a little silly, like doing a split. Gotcha. And, I mean, you're going above and beyond than yeah, what other no. companies go. 
Yeah, so you put on all his gear, and we took him to the backyard, and we were like, all right, you got to do a split. <laughs> you need to see a 90 degree here. All right, Landon, come on. Exactly. Um, so here we got the future, uh, future Descending Volume 1. So you want to talk on that a little bit? This is part of the comic, correct? That is. That's the uh, the cover of the comic, and it's going to be a little, a little different. But yeah, it'll it'll have you know some other stuff like the uh, Invincible the Boys cover. logo. Yeah, so that that's just the example of it. But the the image is going to stay the same. I think we're all also going to offer a black and white version. Ooh. Um, because I just I just really love the black and white ones. But as far as the volumes, it's it's going to be broken down per character. So you're going to be going on missions with each one of the characters throughout the comics. And there's some of the uh, comic book art. And one of the things we actually decided was that we were going to have different artists do each one of the different comics. And that was going to allow you to get a different feel for each one of the characters. So where this one I felt was very appropriate for Spartan, there'll be a totally different one for Cowboy, a different one for Plains Warrior, a uh, different one for the samurai and stuff like that. That's going to tailor more towards like their characteristics and their personalities. So you get that feel as you're going through the comics and then we're going to tie it all back together when we get to the end. And we'll probably finish off with the original artist here. That'll be fucking awesome, man. That'll be really dope. So um, will this be an add on? I'm sorry. I haven't checked. Is it an add on uh, item? So right now you can, yeah, you can, you can add it. Um, it should be able to be added. There are, for some reason, Kickstarter is given like an issue with adding the comic. Like when you add the comic, it wants to only put the comic in the cart or you put the figure and then you add the comic and then it wants to take the figures out. So oh, weird. Uh, okay. still, yeah, it's just weird. I don't know why it works that way or what Kickstarter is really doing there, but we're <laughs> working with Kickstarter to try to get that fixed, get it corrected. But as of right now, you can add it. You can add the comic in. Um, it's it's open. It's unlocked. And, you know, when you go through, uh, what I would suggest as of now for the people who are looking at uh, making a pledge and backing it is just go ahead, add the figures you want, and then you'll be able to add the comic back in when we go into backer kit. So, okay. yeah. yeah, it's there uh, until we can we can get it fixed. That's kind of one of those things where we ha we're in touch with kickstarter and we're trying to get that kind of cleaned up it, it's one of those things that are kind of uh on the on the horizon there to get that corrected understood so uh talking about prototypes here i'm just gonna you know kind of go through them kind of fast if you want to talk about them but there goes the cowboy unpainted and we get to see the cloth goods as you were talking about right yep that's uh that's cowboy and uh this is him and his un helmeted head or unmasked head so he actually has a rebreather mask that that comes with that one and then of course you can remove the cowboy hat the capes like we said they have a little clasp in the front so you can unclasp those and then it's fully wired um and it's it's done with a wire that's it's pretty rigid but it's, it's still very flexible so you get a lot of articulation i mean i've got the cape here and i mean you can you can really get in there and articulate that cape and do whatever you want with it. You know, and yeah, I gotta say that it does hold it does seem like it holds the uh the motion, you know, you get to see the cape in motion and, and kind of capture like there's some wind blowing or whatever. It's nice. Yeah, right. So right now I use this uh this G.I. Joe classified figure as my example just because it's gonna be pretty much kind of in the same scale with a lot of the same articulation. But if you look at that cape, you know, oh, yeah. actually, Boom. this is something else we did. We made sure that all of the weapons and heads will fit. So if you have the gung ho, oh. or if you have, you know, the roadblock, let me see which direction I need to move them, you'll be able to put all of those parts on there. Oh, shit. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, and really get them in to one of those dynamic poses. He actually has the broadsword now, he doesn't have his. His Spartan sword, but yeah, you can see that that looks pretty neat. He's got his helmet that that'll actually pop right on. The ball pegs will the um, head the little you know holes in the heads will actually fit on there and they'll be fit to that size. So it's pretty cool. That is fucking awesome. 
That's 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 pretty fucking dope. Um, so here we got the Spartan and the uh, cowboy next to each other, brothers yeah. in arms. And uh, it's really neat. It's really neat when you get these guys next to each other. Um, just I don't know. It, it's something that I guess you really like error wise. You would probably never obviously see a, a Spartan and a cowboy together. <laughs> but when you put them together and they have that same armor, even though it's painted different, like you totally get that feeling that you got two different guys, but like they belong on the same team. And mm-hmm. that's that's kind of neat. Uh so, like I said, through the first com- couple comics, uh, they're separate. They're in their own comics. They get their own comics, which is a good opportunity for you to learn more about the characters and, like, their personalities, their skills, uh, a little bit about them, where they come from, and so on and so forth. But, yeah, at some point they will come together, and, and that'll be really cool. And here we get a little bit of their articulation in motion. As you can see, there he goes going back. Yeah, and one of the things we thought that was important is to try to make sure that you weren't getting gaps. So when you see them move forward and you see them move back, you you don't see any gaps in between. Um, We we tried to make sure that all of that was kind of worked out. Yeah, if you look in there, there's no gappage. All of that stuff works, yeah, really tight together. Yeah, that's that's usually like for a lot of companies – you go too far forward, you get that big hole. Yeah, we need to talk to uh, Revotech about that. <laughs> There's a lot of companies. <laughs> Here we go, you know, getting the splits there. While keeping yeah. both feet flat. Doing yep, that's what we talked right about. There. Yep, Landon did try that. What is that was like? modeled after myself right there. Yeah, right in the backyard. <laughs> uh, that's mm-hmm. funny. Uh, high jump or high kick? High kick. That looks good. That's good. That's good range. That's you know more than more than some figures that we have coming out right now. Just got to say, and man, this looks the Spartan. This thing looks amazing with the helmet. And mind you, these are just test shots that he's printed up and put together himself. You know, yeah. So yeah. they look that good <laughs> already. You know, imagine. <clears throat> Once everything's was... finalized and all the little final details are added, the alternate head. Yeah, I just kind of want to give off, you know, some of the. Uh, if anybody hasn't been paying attention to the Instagram, these are all up on the Instagram. You can check it out, you know. But I'm just trying to show people if they haven't checked it out. Here we go. We get the roadblock with uh, was that the cowboy? Uh, that's that's actually one of our other figures that we haven't oh. really showed off a lot. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, but no, 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 it's totally okay, or it wouldn't be on Instagram. But yeah, this is gonna he, shrink he, down a little bit. Too, yeah, it'll right? come down. It, it'll they're the models that are at a hundred and four percent right now, so they'll they'll shrink down just a little bit. But yeah, they'll be a little smaller, probably a little closer there to that that roadblock. But they're even now, even now, they're not that far off from them. Yeah, no, I, I just that question comes up a lot. I've noticed so. And here we go, just grayscale. Yeah. Some painted up work right there. Landon even painted those himself. Yeah, they mm-hmm. look good. I got to say, Landon has better skills than me. I'm just like, damn. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been a lot of years of practice. A lot of years. Yeah. I got some fun, of that chest armor. Fun fact Landon's going to paint everyone's figures himself. Hand painted? I'm Holy kidding. shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I was looking at this, I was like, man, this is like really right. awesome. And then you you know, you could throw on some gray or no, not gray, but like silver dry brushing if you so want to do like something like a, a battle damage version. You you can't really see it in this because my, my phone just it's you can see it like a little bit. It, it looks yeah, like but a little it's bit actually like around there. really it's really in there. Um and I think it shows maybe like right One here. of the figures has, a, I think maybe it's uh, Samurai. Maybe it shows up a little bit better. Um, or no, it's Cowboy. If you if you pull up the actual pictures of Cowboy, uh, his armor really shows. I don't know. Let's see if I can get it. I know that on the legs, like right here. 
yeah. shows up a lot better on this armor. You can see the silver dry brushing. And it, it, lo it looks worn. It looks like he's been in battle. It looks like, you know, not brand new armor, which is nice. Yep. And that was one of the things I'm like, you know, if these guys are out there and they're, they're having, you know, to do this every day in a, in a world that is so threatening and, <clears throat> uh, and dangerous, they're going to have wear and tear. Their armor is not going to be perfect. So I really wanted to be able to put that in there, do that little extra bit of detail where it's, it's going to rub, you know, all of the high points of that armor where the, the armor is going to go ahead and rub up against the walls or whatever else they might be kind of leaning against or brushing against or as they're fighting things, that armor is going to get scratched. So I wanted to make sure that that was really depicted in the paint job. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, as far as uh, the goal for the Kickstarter, oh, even it's... the capes are weathered. My bad. I was oh muted. no, it's all it's all good. So I did not know that the capes were weathered. So as far as the goal for the Kickstarter, how much are we asking for? Mm. Uh, so the figures, uh, <laughs> the the overall goal is ninety eight thousand is what mm -hmm. we're trying to hit. The figures themselves are thirty five dollars a piece. Gotcha. Okay, hey, that's that's a really good price. Thirty five dollars each, uh, total ninety eight thousand. Uh, yeah. Here goes a little bit of the shots that you were talking about being able to hold mm -hmm. the uh, guns properly. You know, there's there's a lot of the times that we get like, I'm gonna put it out there, Marvel Legends and other figures like that uh, that can't hold their guns properly. So kudos to you, uh, making sure that you know they could hold their weapons properly. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was key. Um, that's one of those things I just I can't stand. If a figure has a sword, he needs to be able to hold it in a way he's gonna he's gonna be able to wield that sword. So whether he primarily does it with one hand or he does that with two hands, um, that that had to work out. If a guy's gonna be carrying a gun, he's got to be able to do whatever he's gonna be able to do with that gun. Whether he's gonna be holding that with two hands, whether he's gonna be using it with one, shouldering that weapon, bringing it down, loading it. All of those things are really super important. I gotta say, I really love like the energy looking weapons. So is, yeah. is this how they're gonna come? Translucent almost? So let me see here. Uh, let me pull out one of these guys' weapons. Sorry, I got like no, it's okay. all the figures over here just loaded up on the table. But so, and, and once I find it, I'll show you guys here, maybe. Samurai is a good one. He's got his sword. Hey, no worries. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's uh, hold on, switch over. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so what you have is half of that is, is painted, and then that blade is charged. So gotcha. to me it made more sense that something would run up the full spine of the sword or the weapon and then push energy outward. So that energy would radiate through the blade and that would be what would, you know, kind of circumference. Uh, I see the blade. what you're doing there. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if you ever look at like Warhammer 40 K and stuff like that, they always show like these weapons that are energy charged. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want it like, like a lightsaber, um, but I wanted that energy where you knew whenever that guy had that sword charged that, that he, he was mean in business. So, yeah, it, all of them have uh, kind of that energy, that uh, translucent colored blade on there. Okay, I got you. I, okay, I see what you're going for now. I see what you're going for now. Like a so power like charge this weapon. One, so, yeah, so, so that like one. For this then, one. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be painted. They'll be painted. Up, yeah. Painted yeah. up and then. We'll get that energy translucent looking effect. That's awesome. That's dope. Let's see I like that. Yeah, here, here we go. I actually got the his weapons here. This is actually so that was the the prototype when he was in his grayscale, mm -hmm. um, and then we got them all painted up. So his his shield, that's his shield there, and that'll stay that'll stay all translucent. So that's energy, and that'll actually be something that is projected out through his gauntlets or through his his wrist guards. Um, 
And then there's the spear. You can actually see the tip of that where it's charged. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just picking then, it up on the camera. Yeah. Let's see if I can get that in there. You can kind of see the pink where that's. Yeah, you can. It's yep. picking up on camera. Okay. It's reflecting. Yeah. Get a get a tack light. Where's your tack light at? <laughs> well, it, uh, it I got one. <laughs> we, can, we can pull it out if we need to. Yeah, man. So that's cool. And there's plans for more weapons, maybe different color charge ups. Yeah. So right now, um, we're working on a power pack, like weapons packs. And oh, these nice. are translucent. Yep, yeah, these are translucent blue. So we try to go with a color that we haven't done yet. Uh, so Samurai has his, his like green, Spartan has the, the pink, so on and so forth. Uh, Plains Warrior has purple. So to go with a, a pack that we, a color that we didn't have yet in the pack, we're gonna go with the translucent blues. I like that, I like that color. Yeah, and those will, you know, they'll all be painted up except for the shield. The shield, you'll still be able to see through that. And then um, all of the weapons, like the rifles, the pistols, those will all be painted, obviously. But if it has any sort of bladed weapon, um, then it'll have the translucent blade except for the knives. But yeah, okay. that's something we're working on. And then you kind of already saw it, but this is one of the things, like this is a, that's a broadsword. And that's one of the things we'd eventually like to be able to get into. I mean, if the campaign does good enough, then we'll be able to go ahead and open up more things once we have like, you know, a little more uh, to put towards that and, and hopefully get some new weapons, new helmets. Yeah. Um, yeah, we the should faster you back. The faster we're back, the faster we can put up a lot of stretch goals. And like so, I said before, there's a lot of them. So I'm going to just pull up the uh, website right here. So we're at 31. So what is that about? Like uh 30% roughly? Like yeah, like one third. Yeah. So there's you know, almost a month left, 29 more days. It ends October 26, you have till. Uh but yeah, I mean, where's let me see, what's the first stretch goal? Do we have the first stretch goal? Um we didn't put up any stretch goals yet. Um, okay, no, no stretch goals yet. They're gonna be uh some announced week one, right? Right, Landon? So right now, if you scroll down, um, once you kind of get into so the, the picture, campaign? yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead. Oops. So we got right. that. So if you go to number two, uh, Rangers listed as number one. If you go to number two, that's going to be one of our stretch goals. Uh, that's, a, that's an actual figure that we're going to do as the stretch goal. Um, but we'll probably do a couple. We'll probably do these weapons. I'm working on these now, getting them. Oh, painted. I know who this is. Yeah, right. Yeah. If 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 you follow on Instagram, you know who this is. Yep. Um, we haven't showed it. We haven't showed it completely. You know, uh, the the promotional pictures for those painted. That's what you're looking at here, and they're they're gorgeous. I mean, uh, right. so Connor is our actual official photographer for invincible toys he does press boss photography on mm -hmm. instagram you know if you want to you guys want to look him up but he does all of these shots for us and uh he got hold of the prototypes and he just did some phenomenal work um and i give him i give him a big a big kudos because these things are like so fragile when you're messing with the prototypes that they're like falling apart and stuff. So he really had to kind of stick with it to, to get these shots. Yeah, he so did some good shots too. from prototypes. Yeah, he did amazing. He did some Look at that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's gorgeous right there. Yeah, he did a good job. Yeah. We just wanted to get – we just wanted people to see, you know, like Landon can, can get on there and, and give you his drawings and – tell you what he has in his head but he decided to give you actual painted prototypes so you can see what he sees yeah and these um even though that you know he, he's taking these into photoshop and stuff that's that's pretty much what the prototypes look like there's not a lot of extra work done to enhance them um and, and the colors might vary and stuff like that once it gets into the factory because you know there's there's certain things that they can do and they can really bring out and 
other things that don't always transition over the same. But for the most part, this is, you know, what we're aiming for and we really want them to look like. And, and that's going to be the push to get them um, just as much detail in there, get the highlights, uh, get the washes, get the dry brushes and try to get all of those things into those figures. So a question for you. Um, you talked about the accessories, like the weapons and, and, and stuff like that. Is there like an expansion for the armor? as well like say say like i want to do like a full-on army of just planes warriors or something like that so we do have an option for an army builder if you actually scroll all the way down to the bottom you'll see like our army builders it's called uh the artist proof oh so okay. for those who actually want to army build and they want to paint their own armies or whatever else those are down there um, they can they can get those. They can paint them however they want. They're already going to be uh, primed in gray. And oh, then with the, the uh, exclusive, right? The stuff. Yeah. Suit one. So the before I get into that, this exclusive yeah. that's going to be the Kickstarter exclusive, and they're going to probably be a limited number on those. Um, we're probably not going to be that's doing it, that color go. again. Yeah, unless unless it's just got such a high demand that you know, people really want it back. Um, this will probably be the only opportunity people get to get on to that, that color variant. Yeah. And if you, if you scroll down a little bit or scroll up, scroll down, there you go. So this is our artist proof. And this is the like standard armor variant where you have the full face helmet, you have your optional head, you have your weapons and stuff like that. And then, like I said, we're currently working on the weapons pack where you're going to get the blades, you're going to get the spear, you're going to get the shield, um, you're going to get the rifle, you're going to get the pulse rifle, which is like kind of like the shotgun, mm -hmm. uh, the samurai sword, the blades. And you'll have all of that stuff. So if you really want to like tweak your army out and give them all these cool weapons and stuff like that, you'll be able to get that in the pack. And we're also working on heads packs. So there'll be three heads. There'll be the uh, the samurai, or I'm sorry, the the Spartan, the cowboy, and we had another one in there. Uh, Ranger in the Ranger head. All three of those are going to come painted, and then all three of them are going to come unpainted. So if you want to go ahead and put more, you know, unhelmeted heads on those bodies, so you have kind of a wider variety for your army then you'll be able to do that. Or if you're like, oh man, you know, I want to build out my Spartans. Uh, you can go and you can get the regular Spartan, maybe make him like your, your leader of the Spartans. And then you can take your extra heads and then throw them on some other Spartans and build out your armies. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So that will be a possibility to like expand upon and make just like an yeah. army of a particular soldier. Right. We haven't, uh, the only thing we haven't done is the smaller chest armor that like Plains Warrior is wearing. Um, that at this point, it, that's not going to end up being offered. Okay. No worries. Um, I get to say, like, I like the normal, uh, full on armor better. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, like, uh, you know, how you were talking about earlier, like, now you could see or the early renders, the initial, like, all the hands that you offered and, like, these on the actual uh, Kickstarter website, you get to see everything that's being offered, all the weapons, hands, heads, all that extra stuff. So, I gotta say, I really like them. I mean, when I even with this, I can see you throwing any head from the line on there. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. make it make definitely. it your own. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you so you have you have there, and you got the ranger head, and then you buy like a heads pack, and then you can go ahead and throw a Spartan head on there. And a cowboy, you know, the unhelmeted heads, and then you got yourself like a three-man squad. So yeah, you got yourself a stuff team. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I guess just more more details. will uh, you guys will update people on the website mm -hmm. as uh, details develop. Yeah, we got a lot of updates and a lot of stuff to share with you guys. We just need to, you know, take it one day at a time. Got you. Um, so, question. We don't want to give you guys everything at once, you know. <laughs> so, 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 question. Um, you know, if it's fully backed, right? Are these going to be 
available at a later date? Like for people that did not back for the Kickstarter, will they will they be available like on no. a website or something no. like that? No, so back in now. <laughs> they're never coming out again. Well, I am seeing <laughs> that uh, they're available on Big Bad Toy Store right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if, if you're weary for whatever reason after all the stuff we went over and you're still like on the fence and you feel more comfortable with Big Bad Toy Store, um, that's fine. I don't know um, why you would, but okay. I don't. Yeah, but you know, some people are. <laughs> people are like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you do, just back it directly. You can save yourself a few dollars. Um, and um, yeah, they, they will potentially be available at a later date. Uh, maybe on a website, right, Lando? Yeah. So the the website is something we're in the process of. Um, you know, they it, everything you know has a certain price on it. So we kind of had to. We we've, we've already got about twenty thousand dollars invested in the line now. Um, uh, my, myself, I've got twenty thousand dollars invested in the line. That's nothing. I'm trying to make back off the Kickstarter. I'm not taking any of that money back. It's all going towards figures. It's all going towards getting the figures made. Um, so that's that's the goal there. But yeah, because of because of that, because I'm taking care of everything out of my own pocket, it's uh, it's kind of like a step at the time. Um, and, and the site takes a little bit of money, takes a little bit of time. And, and right now that's something we're in the process of getting up and running. So if it does, I, I don't even like to say if, I like to say when, when it gets funded, I like that always positive thinking, but when it gets funded, yes, we will be working on trying to get a website up and going where we'll be going over the bios, we'll be posting stories. Um, even outside of the comic book, there's almost like a, a novel-esque kind of story that came before it was broken down into a comic book about Spartan. And all of them will have those kind of more in-depth stories for people to get on there and read. Uh, so I want to put those on there. I want to kind of put like the little bios and all of that stuff on the comic. And then those figures will eventually be offered on the website. Yeah. Invincible Toys is here to stay. All right. For sure, man. I know, I know, like, uh, me and you have spoke, Landon, and I know, like, you have, like, kind of like a wave two or other characters and things that you want to do and make. So I'm really excited for that. Um, you know, I bet I backed you guys. I, um, I signed up for some figures. So I definitely back you guys. I recommend backing futuristic combat soldiers. Do it. Um, I can't wait for, for wave two, especially with, uh, I don't want to give anything away. Like, I know that you've, you know giving me sneak peeks but just like for the possibility of uh something well, other than warriors can i say that yeah so so uh <laughs> that's amazing to me yeah so you've seen them i've, I've shared images and stuff with uh with you yeah. of those um and what would you say what do you think about them in general about their designs and you know the concepts of them fucking amazing <laughs> that's the only way to say amazing so, so would you say they're just as cool as the ones that we have now oh absolutely absolutely, absolutely. right and and that's the whole goal i mean we all of these concepts that we've been working on i i try to get each one and treat each one as if it was only one if i had yeah. to only make one figure and that's what i was putting out you know what would it look like I only had one opportunity and, and I try to put that mindset into each one of the designs that if this was it, how, you know, how would I make it? How cool is it going to be? If I got to, you know, get this funded and put it on my shelf, am I going to be proud of that in the end? And so we, I really invested that into all of those concept designs. And like you said, you know, when you see them, that that transitions over, and uh, all of Wave Two are, are just as cool as Wave One, uh, if not if not cooler, because at that point I was able to kind of work things around and figure out things. I kind of hit a stride, so putting those characters together, you know, was a, was a little easier, and the designs kind of transition through. And I just got to say, like the story, I can't wait to like get the comic that that just that's going to be an amazing story once it's all together you have like the whole entire complete story or or mm -hmm. at least the origins of the characters where they come together and um 
you know, past that, I, I got to say, like, that is going to be amazing. You've given me like a small little sneak peek. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't want to, you know, give yeah. too much away it's here. It's going to be fun, man. So I, I really about... can't wait. I think people are going to enjoy it. It's going to be Go fun. Ahead. And we've talked more about like the stories and how everything is cohesive. And it's just mm-hmm. really just going to make you like the figures more. Like if there was no comic, you'd love the figures. Oh, it's definitely. That. Yeah. But I highly suggest everyone to just get the comic. Um, it's only five bucks um, with your order. And um, it just adds to the lore and the the cool factor because you're like, oh, snap. So this just all makes sense now. You know, and it's that world building thing. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's there, definitely some dope stuff coming down the line. There's uh, some stuff that we haven't put out there on purpose. Um, and I, I kind of talked about this uh, when we were on toying around with Kevin. Is, is people are like, some people really want the lore. They, they want all of that stuff already put out there for them so they can, you know, I guess buy into it. Buy into mm-hmm. the characters, have those kind of uh, create those kind of uh, you know bonds with the character and stuff like that. Um, but what I wanted was I wanted people to be able to see it and be able to use their imagination like we used to do when we were kids. You know, oh, I had He Man, but he wasn't always He Man. I had GI Joes, but Snake Eyes wasn't always a good guy. He wasn't always Snake Eyes, you know, and stuff like that. Um, so I want people to be able to do what they want with them. If you are like, hey, uh, these there's a whole Spartan army and a whole cowboy army and they're different factions and they fight each other and these are their heroes. And, you know, like, hey, create all of those cool things on your own. Use your imagination. Like that was kind of the goal before we threw out all of these storylines for people to start taking hold of. Because I didn't want people to limit it. I wanted people to see the line and go, wow, this is a cool concept. I could do so many cool things, but I'd like to know more. You know, and then they can have the opportunity to to buy the comic book. They'll be able to read like the the big stories that are all written out in a lot, a lot of detail um, on the website when that goes up and stuff like that. So so that was, you know, kind of purposefully laid out that way where we were siphoning information out. Uh, we haven't showed the bad guys. We haven't really showed who exactly they're fighting and stuff like that, but they're there. They're obviously mm-hmm. designed. Um, you can kind of see that in the comic book and, and just looking at it, people probably would be like, I'm not entirely sure what they're going to be fighting here, <laughs> you know, but it, it is very much laid out in volume one like what's going on in the world of futuristic combat soldiers, who they're fighting, what the threats are and what they're doing. And, uh, and I just love it. I love the way the story starts off. Um, I already obviously know how the the other comic books are going to go. And, uh, they're just all really cool and and really exciting. Yeah. And instantly I I, I can see this happening. Instantly someone's going to read the first book and they're going to be like, they're going to probably message Landon on Instagram or wherever and be like, oh, man, this would be so cool. Are you going to make these? Because that's what I can see. And yes, we'll answer it now. Yes, he is going to make those. <laughs> yeah, we're so, going to, the goal is to make a lot of stuff. Um, there's no plan stopping. Yeah, we're not we're not limiting ourselves to anything. We plan on making bad guys. Uh, I talked about this before. We plan on making females. I want to make a female for every single male we have. So if like if we have Spartan, we're going to have a Spartan female, cowboy, female cowboy, so on and so forth, all the way up the line. We're not um, feminists over here. We're not feminists. Yeah, we're not I, mean, I, I, mean, I would wait, love- did I say that right? No, we're not. No, <laughs> feminists. We're not. What's, what's the word? I think you got it right. Misogynistic? What? Misogynistic. Yeah, we're not misogynistic <laughs> over here. Thank you, Gil. <laughs> Yeah, so um, and there there was no you know specific re- well there was a specific reason why we didn't have female characters. It just when you start getting into making these figure lines and stuff like that, there's a lot of cost that goes into it. Like I said, it, I'm I'm probably around twenty thousand dollars already invested in simply just making prototypes, getting the comic books written out, having artists you know get in there and draw them and stuff like that. So it's 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 very costly. Yeah, and I'm expensive to keep around. Seth is 95% of it. 
right there. Yeah. But no, all jokes aside, you know, you know, when someone says, um, you know, you can't invest in someone that's not willing to invest in themselves. Well, this right here is a perfect example of that. Landon has invested 20 grand of his own money into this. He could have been buying Sentinels with messed up knees and, you know, uh, full waves of legends and this on a third. But he, he hasn't as big as of an action figure fan. He is. He hasn't bought none of that he instead invested all that into this project so with that being said he's willing to invest in himself and i think you guys should as well and then that's, that's hopefully you know what i'm saying that's it we're 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 doing good on the kickstarter so far hopefully we can keep that trajectory going man and just get this thing funded i'm because so, the thing is like gil you've seen some stuff behind the scenes i've seen almost everything beside behind the scenes and the stuff that he's coming out with is is so cool and just adds to you know this this whole project and like wave two and we've talked about concepts for wave three um the females uh, the whole nine man it's just you know, we could talk for hours about ideas for action figures and what, what the community wants and, and what we wanted to make. And it all just, uh, it's all there, ready to be made. You know, like he said, you just got to go over this first hump of making your initial action figures and then getting the name out there. And then that from there, everyone's going to say, okay, Landon, he delivered his first project, you know, with, that's with anybody. And then once you deliver your first, they're like, okay, he's trustworthy. They got their figures in hand. They're like, oh, these are super nice. I can't wait for wave two now. Then, you know, that's when the wave two comes. And before you know it, you know, Principal Toys is doing wave three or another toy line. Hmm? Yeah. Who knows, so, when that, who knows what else will come. Um, yeah. We're having technical difficulties with Landon. Not sure he froze a little bit. Um, I think he started crying when I told when I was talking nice about him. Yeah, I and like to he, do that. He couldn't he couldn't keep in his emotions there. He didn't want um, to see people people <laughs> see him cry. But um, I don't know if I, if I can say though. anything to it. Yeah, just just go back it. Um, like I said before, the money is not taken out of your account until the last day. So if something happens, October twenty six. Uh, you know, um, you you can back out. You know, if something happens, I get it. I get it. It happens. Oh man, I really ain't got the money. Let me back. You know, but at least back it now, so we can reach mm -hmm. that goal. So we can get you those stretch goals, and just uh, you know, bring Invincible Toys to everyone's collection. Yeah, I mean, like I, like I said, I I backed it. You know, I've been talking to Landon for months. Uh, you're a part of it. I mean, that has somewhat to do with, I guess, my bias. But, I mean, even if you weren't part of it, Seth, I was still going to back it. Like, before you even yeah. became part of it, I was already going to well, back it. Well, you know, I don't think we've told this this part of the story yet. But you, he just wanted some artwork done. And you were like, hey, this guy is looking for artists. Why don't you go do something for him? Get your name out there. I was like, all right, cool. I hit him up. He's in Florida as well. Seemed like a cool dude. Um, Landon's very personable. Like, if you hit up Landon... He's not. He's gonna message you back. He's not an asshole like that. Not so no. you know, and, and we just started talking. He started telling me what he was trying to do. Started sending me little, you know, prototype pictures and stuff like that. There was a toy show that came up that was local, uh, about halfway between where we both live. We met up. He brought me this shirt and um, and and some prototype heads to show me and. I was just more invested. I was like, man, what can I do to help? And that's when he was just like, yeah, man. And I used some of my comic connections and podcast connections to kind of just help him along the way. Um, and, you know, um, I, I back, I've backed this, but I back Landon 110%. I mean, I don't, I'm not a big name or nothing by any means, but, you know, I could ruin some potential opportunities I have if I were to back land and, and he weren't to deliver, but by any means, that's not him at all. And I have 110% um, assurance that, that he's going to deliver on this project. He wants to made more than anybody, you know, no one invests 20 grand into themselves like that 
without expecting, you know, to, for these things to get made. Hey, you're back. You had to go cry <laughs> a little bit after all the nice things I was saying. Yeah, I was tearing up, so I decided it was probably best to step away and uh, <laughs> handle my business and then readdress. I, I don't want people to, to think that, you know, I have any sort of feelings towards you. This big, the big tough soldier guy crying. <laughs> I, had, I had to gain your composure. It's okay, man. It's okay. No, nah, I, oh, so I was just, yeah, I was just reassuring everybody, um, you know, why they should back this thing. And, um, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, when it when it comes to that, if I, I feel this way, if it's something people are interested in and they want something cool and, and something unique, uh, something that's going to kind of be around for a while that they're going to be able to add to and build on their collection. Uh, like you said, we we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Uh, we have a huge creative team that's always coming up with ideas. We have so many ideas. We already talked about some of the females. Um, I, I really, really want to get into the female characters. I just think they're going to look gorgeous. I think they're going to look so cool in that armor. Um, we have ideas for animal companions. If you look into the, the cover uh, with Spartan on it, you know, there's there's a something there. Uh, and if you take a look at it, there we want to work towards doing animal companions. Um, that are going to be awesome. Get the comic book, you know, read the comic book, see what I'm talking about. Uh, you'll, you will really, really uh, like what's going on there in the comic book between Spartan and, and his, his companion there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we want to keep growing. We're going to keep pushing uh, the line and putting things out there. Uh, we're trying to make sure that, you know, this is something that we're going to go, we'll do wave one, we'll go into wave two, then we'll probably in wave three, wave three is really where we're going to have an opportunity to start working into new sculpts. That's where we're going to try to get in uh, some female characters, maybe those animal companions. We might bring the animal companion in before that, depending on how well everything's going. Um, but essentially what we're, we're trying to do is because this is Invincible Toys is new. Um, and, and even though it's we've been doing this for two years and we've been working on these projects and doing everything behind the scenes, I mean, you can literally see that in the Instagram from the time we posted all the way up until now, how long ago that was. Uh, but this is this is that opportunity to really build a good stable foundation and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to let people see that we have good ideas that we have good products um we're working with you know top of the line factories uh we're working with a company called sonos designs and what they do is basically they they make these things happen they've been in the industry for 36 years um and, and they've worked on all sorts of, of projects and stuff like that. They have uh, seven to nine factories that they actually work with uh, that, that just do this. So uh, that's, you know, hopefully that gives a little bit of reassurance to people uh, that, that still feel maybe unsure about getting in there and, and backing the line, and whether or not this project will come to fruition. Uh, something else is I'm, I'm a huge person uh, in – always following your goals and, and making sure those come to fruition and things like that. You know, that's, it's like things don't always come as soon as you want it. And some things are hard and some things are, you got to work to achieve. And that's, that's been what futuristic combat soldiers has uh, basically from concept all the way up until now, I, I taught myself how to do this. I've invested the time. I've invested the money. Uh, I am investing myself into the company, into the figures and stuff like that. And I really want to see this happen as much as anybody else does. This isn't like one of those things where I'm like, I just want to create a company. This is like, I care more about getting these figures done because I love action figures. That's what I said I when you cut toys. out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. See, so we're, we're saying the same things and I wasn't, I wasn't there for it. Um, but that's what I want. I want people to get something in their hands that they really enjoy, that they put on their shelf, or maybe they keep in their package. I like stuff in the package. And you just look at, and you're glad to have that in your collection, that you're proud to have that. And, you know, like, I love having, you know, like, uh, 
being able to build the collection. They're going to continue to be affordable as long as I can keep them affordable. You know, I, I understand that some things hit the secondary market and they kind of spike up and stuff like that. And as long as we can continue pushing these things forward, they're going to be collector friendly. Uh, and, and that's what we're, we're shooting for because uh, I'm, I'm paying for these figures out of my own pocket. I'm not taking, we're not getting our, the figures in from this campaign and, and I'm taking figures on my own. I'm paying for my own figures. I'm putting my money towards the campaign. So to help get it funded. Um, so are all the other guys that are, that are here. Seth's doing the same thing. Uh, he's already, he's already backed it. Um, the other guys that are working with us, they're doing all the same stuff too. So yeah. No free figures for us either. No, no free figures. We all support the line. We all support what we're doing here. We all believe in it. And uh, we want to see, want to see these figures in hand and get them on the shelf like everybody else does. All right, guys, we'll get out there and go back them, hit up Kickstarter for uh, the futuristic combat soldiers and Landon, where can they keep up with you at? So there's Instagram. So invincible under slash toys on Instagram. And then there's the, the Kickstarter. And we're also on Facebook under invincible toys, but primarily most of that stuff is going to be on our Instagram. You can get on Instagram and you can check out everything from the original concept drawings. Don't be too rough on those. Um, <laughs> but you can see the original concept drawings. You can see some fan art. You can see some of my art. You can see all the turnarounds. You can see all the prototypes, anything you want to see on the process of how the futuristic combat soldiers got to this point and how the campaign came about. It's all there on that Instagram. Most of that stuff is connected. So it, some of it does feed through onto Facebook. Um, but Instagram is probably really the, the way to go if, if you want to follow up on that stuff. We talked about uh, Invincible Toys. Invincible Toys website will be coming um probably here within you know a couple of months so we'd eventually like to be able to go ahead and get that uh up and running too and when we get that going then we'll let everybody know and if you do have the invincible toys instagram i will pay you a hundred dollars for it so <laughs> we don't have to use an <laughs> underscore <laughs> so Message me at seth.horton.33 on Instagram. For a hundred bucks for invincible toys. Yeah, we, we, we want the full name, man. <laughs> yep, there they are in all, all, all their glory. Uh, sorry, also, I was on mute. Sorry, my bad. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Uh, also, for those who are in Canada, um, e collectibles. Is, is doing the is going to be exclusively you know our retailer for the Canada um you know shopping ladies and gentlemen there in Canada so we don't offer international shipping there was just a lot of logistics that went into that that we weren't able to to really do so um if they're looking for it in Canada e collectibles would be the place to go and that's listed also there on the Instagram under all of those links and stuff like that all right, for sure. And Seth, what about you? Where can they keep up with you at? Um, Seth.Horton.33 on Instagram. And um, yeah. All righty. And I'm your host, Gil. And you can keep up with me over at Black Hole Comics, all social media, and YouTube. Till next time, make sure to say geeked up and geek out. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you, guys. Thanks, Gil. Appreciate it.